Welcome to the Course Creators Podcast with your host, Sarah Cordner. Learn all about profitably educating your marketplace, creating online and offline training courses, marketing and selling online courses, and building a successful education-based business. You are listening to the world's leading resource for entrepreneurs and modern-day course creators. And here's your entrepreneur queen, Sarah Cordner. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Course Creators Podcast. I'm Sarah Cordner, your host. Now today, we're not going to be talking about course creation as such. One of the things we talk about on the Course Creators Podcast is also about how to run a successful education-based business. And business isn't just about building products and services and selling them to your market. As you guys know, there's a whole heap of other stuff that comes with creating a business. And one of those things is one of the things that can kill some businesses. It's some of the things that can actually kill people. And it's something that's really come up for me recently in some of the Facebook groups that I hang out in, some of the business conversations I've been part of, and some of the things that I've been passively observing in the background. And I really felt like it had to be addressed. And this topic today is all about how to deal with your competition. See, competition affects us all in very different ways. One of the first things I want to bring home here is that it's actually quite normal to feel a little bit threatened or to feel a little bit envious, even frustrated with your competition. I mean, let's face it, when we are sat back and the only thing we can see is what our competition are doing well, what they're succeeding in, or what it looks like they're doing well and succeeding in, it can make us start to think about all the things that we're not doing. And this really happens uh, very often with people to the point where it can consume them so much that it crushes their self-efficacy, it crushes their confidence, it crushes their belief that they can be successful because they are judging themselves from something that isn't necessarily always factual or true. And this is where they give up, where they cave in, where they get anxiety and even depression. And this is where so many people are putting themselves under unjust and unfair criticism to the point that they actually stop serving people, to the point that they stop helping change people's lives to the stop where they actually stop making income to put a roof over their own heads with the information, the knowledge and the resources they have perfectly and adequately in their hand to do really, really well. So I want to address the topic of competition today and I'm going to come at this from some good points and some bad points. So be prepared and I'm going to give you a number of tips of ways that I feel we can deal with the competition in a way that's healthy um, yet in a way that keeps us healthy on the inside as well. So aside from it being really, really good for us, because when we have competition, it helps us stay on our toes. If we lived in a world where there were no competition, where there was no one doing what we're doing, where there was no one threatening us, and I'm going to use that word, threatening our income, threatening our reputation, whatever it might be, then we would simply carry on doing the same thing. There would be very little urgency for us to innovate or change or grow or evolve. So, you know, we're at this threat of being stale and boring and actually moving into an existence that wouldn't be very fun for us at all if we didn't have competition to force us into a situation where we have to constantly be changing, constantly staying up to date, constantly being out there and finding new ways of doing what we do and being who we want to be. So it is important to peek over the garden fence sometimes, not just from the sake of evolution, but also from a point of seeing how we can be better. So one of the things I want to bring home here is that looking at our competition isn't to look at what are we not doing. It's about going, okay, well, this is what the benchmark of my industry is is doing right now. How can I be different That's the biggest question I want you to ask yourself is how can I be different? How can I be better? Because the second you do something different, you're no longer competing. You no longer have competition if you're being different. And therefore, we're not in a situation where we're being chewed up with anxiety about what everyone else is doing around us. So always look at your competition and say, how can I be different? And importantly, a piece of advice I always give is how can I be more expensive? 
Because the soon as we go into a situation where we're trying to price ourselves lower so that we can win the business, so that we can win the competition, it's the second we start pricing ourselves out of business. We start pricing ourselves out of the market. And I'll ask you an honest question. Who walks into a supermarket and sees a whole range of bread and go, hmm, oh yes, I'd really love the cheapest one. That's definitely gonna be my favorite. Of course you don't. You're gonna subconsciously think, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have the most expensive one? I wonder what that tastes like. <laughs> so we want to look at not just using the number to make ourselves better, but actually looking at our comp competitive services and going, right, well, how can I use that as a benchmark for how I can be different and even better than that so that I can actually really truly justify having higher costs and therefore being a more premium service by default of being actually better than that. So while we're peeking over the fence, we need to bear something in mind. Peeking over the fence can be useful if you're doing it to serve your audience better. However, when you get to the point that you're peeking over the fence so obsessively, when you're so preoccupied by having a look to see what they're doing, that you don't even notice that the weeds growing in your own garden are starting to choke each other that's when you know you have a problem. When you are so preoccupied by how beautiful somebody else's garden looks that you have weeds climbing up your legs and bringing to destroy you and sucking and leeching all of the blood out of you and covering up your garden into a giant dirty jungle, that's when you need to go, right, I have an issue here where I'm so obsessed with what other people are doing that I've completely forgot what I'm doing for myself. And all of us, I think, can, uh, agree, uh, can agree that even momentarily, some of us have done this. I definitely have, right? So we need to go, right, when we get to a point that we are doing this, where we're thinking about what other people are doing to the point that, you know, our own garden's going untended, we need to realize that actually when it comes to these emotions, these feelings, this envy, this, envy, this jealousy, even hatred sometimes that can come from the green-eyed monster, that it's actually us that are the problem, not our competition. You see, what our competition are doing is exactly the same as what we're trying to do. They're simply trying to keep a roof over their heads. They are just like us. They are trying to build a business. They're trying to build a brand. They're trying to get business. They're trying to get money. They're trying to get followers. They've probably got a family to feed. They've got a roof to pay to put over their head. Just like us, they are doing everything they can with the resources that they've got to make a business for themselves. Now, sometimes we can look at our competition and be like, oh, you're dirtying my industry industry or oh, you make me so mad because you do it shit right excuse the language but here's the point is some people are doing what the best that they can do the best that they've got with the knowledge that they have now some people have had different life experiences than you they've been educated differently to you they've grown up and been around different circles than you so if we look at another entrepreneur and the way they're doing business and we think oh god why is he doing it like that why is he using those words why is he approaching customers and selling in that way the worst thing we can do is actually try and poo poo him because he is only doing like us what he knows how to do with what he's got. And the second you start feeling anger about the words he's using or the way he's doing it or whatever, or the approach that he has, is the second we know or we need to know is our trigger that we're peeking over into their garden instead of looking at our own. So <laughs> I hope I can use this analogy to help us remind us when we are peeking over the fence just a little bit too much to the detriment of our own growth and our own audience. Now, as I go into some of the tips in a minute, um, it's ironic that I'm delivering this topic because I've actually very recently have a lot of people say, do you know what, Sarah? You are actually the very person who twists up my insides with envy. You are the person who makes me feel like I'm being lazy or falling behind because you do so much. You seem to be achieving so much. Your life seems to be so perfect, right? And um, yeah, I have to acknowledge that because yes, I do work hard to achieve what I do. But the thing is, again, I then explain to them what I did to achieve that thing that they're jealous of or envious of or feeling bad about that they haven't done. And immediately they're no longer jealous. When people realize what I went through to get what I have, they're like, yeah, you're right, you can keep that now. <laughs> now I know that. So because I know that about myself, I just want to pass on this information that, you know, when you're looking at other people's successes, try to think about to make yourself feel better, what they may have had to go through, what, what mud they had to trudge through, what mountains they had to climb 
time privately in order to get that thing in the first place. And actually, this is where you can come from a place of respect. If you've tried to do what they have achieved that you're jealous of or envious of or angry about, and you, you haven't got that thing, is your anger coming from jealousy or is it coming from the fact that you just haven't sat down for a moment to truly understand what they may have been through to get there and therefore that perhaps they deserve your admiration as opposed to your frustration? That really, really works because when we are looking at other people, we can often forget as well just how much we are doing and we are achieving. If we are looking at the fact that somebody else has just, I know, got a, a special shout out on Facebook, we suddenly forget about the person we've spent all day helping behind the scenes privately. You know, we can be so obsessed by looking at the number of likes that our competitor has got on their latest Facebook blog that we have forgotten to sit and market our own blog to get likes on it ourselves. We need to make sure that when we're looking at a competition, we're doing it in a way that's going to help us improve and be better and be different, not in a way that's going to make us forget all of the achievements that we have made and that we have done too. So in trying not to be as good as them and being instead different and better to them, the next thing I want to move into is that competition now is quite fair. In the old days, we lived in a world where he who had the most money would eventually win the prize because he had the most money to do advertising, TV ads, Facebook ads, billboard ads. The person who had the most amount of money, normally the biggest and most established businesses, were more likely to win the business. And small companies, startup businesses, one man bands, guys working at home by themselves, really didn't stand a huge chance against these big corporates or big organizations. Well, the thing is now, we can feel quite happy about the fact that business doesn't work that way anymore. We can compete. We can compete with anyone. There is no David and Goliath anymore. The playing field is now quite even. With social media out there and so many free ways to market yourself, get your brand out there, your name out there, your message out there, your personality out there, your products and services out there, it's actually now really, really easy to compete with some of the big, more long-standing guys. Because now it's not about who's got the most money. Now it's about who's the fastest. And importantly, who's the most helpful. And this means that smaller businesses actually have an advantage over the bigger, more established businesses. Because the bigger and more established a business becomes, the more tied up in bureaucracy and processes and procedures that it becomes. When you're a small business, you have the ability to act fast. You could be standing in the shopping line at the supermarket and see a post come up whereby you can help someone and you can respond immediately. You can send a video message. You can send a voice message to them privately. You can send a public response. You can quickly throw together a blog post. You can jump on a live stream and answer the question. You can position yourself as the expert before David, before Goliath, because of the fact that you are able to respond without having to go through a communication pathway or process. Secondly, when I talk about this sense of helpfulness, no longer are people persuaded to buy a particular service simply by, you know, how good a Facebook ad is or how amazing a, a video has been produced and put together. Now it's about who was the most helpful person, who gave the best advice at the right time. So. This is how I dealt with my competition when I was first starting. Now, when I moved from the corporate space to the public space, I essentially went to a brand new industry and I was nobody. And I was looking at influencers in the industry that were in a similar field to me. And I was thinking, you know, how can I compete with this? I, I don't have hundreds and thousands or millions of followers. How can I compete with that? I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to place down on Facebook advertising. How can I possibly compete with that? I don't have big, huge influential partners that are affiliates of my products and services. How can I compete with that? And it crushed me to begin with. I just thought, I can't be that person. I can't do that. I can't get there. I'm nobody. How can I possibly do that? And I nearly quit. I thought, you know, this, I'm too late. I'm too late. This industry is already established. It's already crowded. There's already people that are at the top. But what I realized very quickly was that these people couldn't be as helpful or as fast as I could. 
So I made a decision that I thought, you know what? I don't care how much money you've got. I don't care how big you are. The one thing you can't do that I can is you cannot out help me. You cannot out kind me. And you know what no one will ever do is you can't outwork me. And I went in with this mindset of, okay, yeah, you can outspend me. You can totally do that, but you cannot out help for me. You cannot out kind me and you cannot outwork me. And with that in mind, I have gone on to not be as good as them, not crush them, not take over them. I've gone to build my own place where I have built a tribe that has come to me. I haven't actually even had to compete with those people because by working hard and thinking, how can I be as kind and as helpful on purpose as I possibly can to show people that I give a monkeys about them, to show people and prove to them that I know what I know, I have been able to establish my own unique space that doesn't take away anything from them, that doesn't make me compete with them in any way at all. So ask yourself now, look, it's not about what you don't have. It's about what you do have that you can use right now with the resources that you have to make yourself your own space. So this takes me on to the next tip, which is about knowing what your unfair advantages are. I want you to keep thinking about what you do have right now. So what are your unfair advantages? Now, some of you may have heard me talk about this before. Your unfair advantages are basically things that you have that your competition doesn't have, right? Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you are better than your competition. It just means that you're highlighting how you're different. And this is really, really powerful because again, remember if you're trying to say, I'm better than this person in the same thing, you're competing. As soon as you find a way to be different, you're no longer competing. It's not an apple and an apple anymore. It's an apple and something else. So when you've established how you can be different, then start thinking about what your unfair advantages are. So what are unfair advantages? First of all, go and take a little peek over the fence, a gentle, quick one, purely for the sake of market research and see what do my competition have? What are they promoting as their skills and their strengths and their unique selling propositions actually are? And then ask yourself, well, what have they not got? Instead of asking yourself what you haven't got, look at your competition and go, what have they not got? Stop going, what have they got that I haven't got? What have they done that I haven't done? Instead go, what haven't they got that I have got? What haven't they done that I have done? And you get the point here. So for you, this could be that you've been featured in a particular magazine, that you've won a particular award, that you're qualified in a certain place and they're not, that you have, um, I don't know, you, you've got your own magazine and they haven't, you've got a book and they haven't. Think of all of the things that you possibly have got that they might not have, a certain kind of customer, a certain number of customers, a certain number of years worth of experience. Now this can be any number of things. It doesn't have to be grandiose and amazing. It doesn't have to have been climbing Mount Everest with no arms or legs. I'm talking about five finding whatever you can that you have that shows that you're good at what you do, that backs up that you know what you say you know, that backs up that you have experience in what you do. And I use this to my advantage a lot in an industry that I have my competition literally tripling every single day. I'm in an industry that's worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Every time I turn my laptop on in the morning, there are a heap more people that have jumped on the bandwagon, usually having taken my courses, that are now setting up shop and competing against me. And the thing is, guys, if I saw that as a reason why I shouldn't continue, well, then I want to think about all the people that I would not be helping. So this takes me on to something else, because here's the next thing that happens when it comes to competition is people say, well, look, Sarah, there's a lot of competition out there. And if I start sharing all of my advice and sharing all of my knowledge, I say to people, do live streams, write blog posts, go onto podcasts and be interviewed, go to free events and deliver talks, do paid talks and workshops, give your knowledge away. People go, but hang on, my competition is watching. If I give away all of my knowledge, if I share all of my expertise, well, they're gonna copy me, right? Well, the thing is, <laughs> If you give away your knowledge publicly, first of all, you have proof that you gave it first. So if you're doing this by posting videos on YouTube or doing live streams online or publishing a blog post, they all have the published date on them. So if someone else goes and then does the same thing after you, you're just like, oh, how cute, someone's copying me. I totally did this first, right? If that's really important to you, there's that. But here's the main thing, right? 
you, when you give your knowledge and your information, your expertise away, have the potential to help millions of people. Now, you don't have to go on and exponentially change someone's life, but by sharing your knowledge, you can help people, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, potentially. Now, are you telling me that you would rather millions of people don't have your knowledge just so that one competitor doesn't get that knowledge? Really? You're willing to hold back help and change from millions of people just so that one or two people don't do the same? If you're truly committed to your industry, if you're truly committed to helping people and helping people change their lives or make a difference or have an impact in a way that's going to make them grateful that you exist, you're going to have to get okay with the fact that your competitors are actually your colleagues because... If you have set a mission to help a certain group of individuals in a particular niche with a certain type of thing, if other people are helping you do that too, they're helping you on your mission. They're not taking away from your mission. They're actually helping you achieve the very thing that you're trying to achieve. And I truly believe that the only way to get more business is to show people and let them experience and taste that you are the person that you say you are. And the only way to do that is to show them, to give it, to put it across and put that expertise in their hands so that they know firsthand that you are that good. I truly and honestly speak from experience when I say that the, the amount of business you get is directly proportionate to the amount of free help and advice that you give. And I really, truly, duly believe that. So the next thing we move on to is relationships and just how important relationship building is. You know, when we're talking about the people that truly can trust us and feel like they know us when they've had a taste of our expertise before they've even bought anything from us, this really backs up the fact that relationships are critically important. So here's the thing. I say this example quite a lot. Now, if I got an entrepreneur or anyone, anyone, absolutely anyone up here and I wrote out a script to one of my videos and I told them to repeat my exact script. Let's say I gave them my PowerPoint slides. I even trained them on how to deliver my talks the way that I deliver them. I could even take off my flipping dress, right? And my dress to wear and put my lipstick on them, whoever it might be, right? And they could come up and deliver an identical piece of content to me with my script, with my stuff, wearing my clothes. And here's a fact. There will be people that absolutely hate me and absolutely love that person and vice versa. Even though we're doing exactly the same thing in precisely the same way, in the same room, at the same time, to the same very audience. And this is because people like people. And we either connect with somebody because it's unexplainable. We either like them or we don't like them. We click with them or we don't click with them. We like their personality or we don't like their personality. And that's it. Sometimes it's actually less to do with the content we're delivering, but more about the way we deliver it, the personality we have, the style we use, or just quite simply, whether we even remind them of somebody that they like or hate. It's as simple as that. So the way I look at, again, competition is the fact that no matter what happens in the world and what we do in the world, we are going to attract some people and repel other people. So it's impossible to have 100% of the marketplace from that perspective. So when we have competition, the way we can see that is, well, quite simply, they're just taking the percentage of people that just don't like me. Not because I'm not good, not because my stuff isn't good, it's just because we're different people. And it's as simple as that. That's just as far as it goes. Now, on that same mark, it's also impossible for us to have 100% of the marketplace because the world is bigger than we think. <laughs> like there's 7.2 billion people out there. And if, if you get to a point where you can take on 7.2 billion people in your business and actually serve them all well, then do you know what? Then you can start getting shitty about the competition and trying to beat them down. But believe me, I categorically can assure you that there's no way you could handle 100% of the marketplace. So why are you getting upset about the fact that that person is taking some of them? 
And on a similar point, do you even want 100% of the marketplace? There are some people that we click with and we don't. There are some people that I just absolutely hate working with, not because they're a bad person, but because they have a completely opposing personality style and working style to me. There are some people who just work in a way that absolutely frustrate the hell out of me. And working with that type of individual just would make my job really hellish. It would make my days not fun. So again, purely by sake of completely different personalities, personalities, not because some people are good or bad or whatever. It's just purely because, well, I only want to work with this type of person. I only want to work with someone who's got this type of, you know, situation or, or a characteristics. That person, the competition, might like working with a different style of people. Therefore, again, they're doing me and the industry a favor. So that's really, really important. Now, um, the, the, the last thing to really think about here, and this is my last tip with this particular podcast, a very short one for you, is that, you know, aside from our competition being just like us and just trying as hard as they can like we are to do business, the point is they're in the same business as you. And that means that you probably have a lot more in in similarity, a lot more in common than you might realize. You clearly have the same passions, you clearly have the same interests, even if you do things differently, which can be a positive. The point is you you are on the same mission, you're on a very similar mission. So why wouldn't you think about collaborating? Some of my biggest successes has been approaching my competition and going, hey, let's look at how we're different. Let's look at what my strengths are and what your strengths are and see how we can put those together. Because the chances are the fact that we're completely different people and have totally different experiences, have learned our art and our expertise in different ways, means that we probably have some really cool stuff to put together that's going to value add to each other's thing. Why wouldn't you do that? Two people means you are going to more than double your reach. Two people means you're going to more than double the workload that you can take on, more than double the impact that you can create. You can actually more than double the content that you're producing and more than double the number of perspectives that your information is coming from. You're going to more than double the number of people that you're going to appeal to. And so we have a situation here where anyone who's not collaborating, I think, is really, really missing out. And this has been a great thing for me overcoming some of the, the competition that's growing around me every single day is I'm going, wow, what are they doing that I admire? What about them do I love? What about them are strengths that um, that could contribute to my weaknesses? And therefore, I've reached out to them and gone, hey, let's do a podcast. Let's do a webinar and um, come into my Facebook group. What can we do? Can we make a product where your strength and my strength comes together and we share that 50-50? So look at your competition really as a way to join forces so that you can double the impact and the people and even the income that it is that you're making. So if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by the competition that's out there, please remember all of these tips. Remember that you are absolutely unique in your message, the way you speak, how you are, your personality, your character, and how you've learnt and communicate everything that you give back. And no matter what the competition is doing, you will always be 100% unique. So look at what those unique things are, what those unfair advantages are, and let those shine. Focus on all the things you are doing and that you do have, not what you haven't got and what other people are doing. As soon as you find yourself in a situation where you're peeking over that fence a bit too much that your own weeds are growing in the background, you know you need to come into the Entrepreneur to Edupreneur Facebook group and get a little cuddle and maybe a kick up the bum from myself. So I hope that's helped you. I hope that's made you feel a little bit more confident, a little bit less queasy, twisty and green-eyed about what's going on around you. And guys, I'm giving you a massive boost, massive thumbs up. What you're doing is amazing. You have so much to share with the world. So please, please, please go back into your garden, tend it perfectly and beautifully as best as you can with the tools and resources that you've got and never be afraid to knock on the neighbor's door and ask for a hand. See you soon.